Hello and welcome to property vlog number three. And yeah, some good news. Made an offer on a property two weeks ago now. Yeah, it's two weeks ago. It feels like it's just a week ago, but it's two weeks ago and got the offer accepted. I'll show you some images of the property as well. The two bedroom and terrace house. And I'll run you through some of the numbers. I'll run you through the core fundamentals I was looking for as well. And it hasn't been long, but the little few experiences I've had with the mortgage broker and the solicitors and the estate agents as well, and just my feedback so far. Okay, so just a little FYI, I, this is not the first time going through the process of getting a house. Just recently got one with my wife back in summer. This is the one we're living in. This is the first one we're getting for investment purposes, and we're doing it for a limited company. So the rates that you will see, or the rate you will see, that will be offered is going to be probably higher. Will I can almost guarantee it's going to be higher than if you went and did it personally through a you know personally got the mortgage for the property instead of going through a company. Okay, first of all, let me show you the house first. So this is the house been done really nicely from the inside so yeah this was like one of the attractive aspects of it the, like the, especially the kitchen i mean the rest of it looks really good as well but the kitchen is like the stand out thing for this property like that's the main bathroom it looks very good as well had a little bathroom downstairs the, you know the garden been done well he was saying there was all mess there was a shed at the back that just apparently was all broken and everything but yeah, so, yeah so, so this was an interesting one. Uh, this was the garden. And then in the next section, there was this little, what well, is a toilet, but it's just used as a storage now. It's technically owned by the person who owns the house. I mean, like it's this will be ours or mine once I get that property. So yeah, this was a weird one. Uh, kind of strange, but they see in a totally different, you know, house. Uh, but I've seen stuff like that before, and there's a walkway, but again, you get that with terrace houses. And yeah, so this is the property, so what it looks like. And yeah, so that's really it. The other thing is this little thing, like an extension onto the kitchen. If you look at the into the kitchen images, I'll be quick if I do it that way. Maybe, maybe not. If you look at the kitchen images, not that one, the other one, that one. As you can see, it was up to here and then it goes further back into here. So this wasn't an extension that the person did per se. He said he was a lean to initially. He put a proper roof on it and he converted that. But if so, it wasn't an extension um, that he did, but it was something that he converted into an, a proper extension. And he did a good job. He said he did all the work himself. He said the guy said that's what he does. Him and I think he said his wife literally just buy a house, live in it, you know, renovate it, and then move on. No issue with that, that I'm going to come on to in a second. But yeah, so, so yeah, he did a very good job for himself. And yeah, the property, what is at in the price, you know, is at, uh, it's up here, £130,000. When I got there, I asked him, have you had any offers? Have you had many viewing? He said, yeah, he's had one offer, wasn't quite enough. He said he's had viewing. He said he's gonna have more viewing. They seem genuine about it, so I think he's probably telling the truth. And literally that day, I came back, ran the numbers, and I made an offer. I lowballed it. I knew I wasn't gonna get this. I was willing to go up to the asking price of one thirty, so I lowballed it at one fifteen, and I was like, "What happens? You know, it's not the end of the world." So I said one fifteen. He came back like I mean, the state agent strike came back says. Too low, it's already off a harder, off a higher, and he's injected, which I had already known by then. And I said, like, uh, I basically got it at the estate agent that the offer was 125, and he wants a little higher than that. That he said he wants higher than more than that, uh, closer to the asking price of 113, but there's wiggle room. I was like, okay, it's only a few K, but clearly wiggle room. So I said 126, he went back. Says, can we meet in the middle of the one two five of the, the previous owner and the one thirty at one two seven five hundred? So basically, can squeeze a bit more. To him, it's a bit more needed to squeeze the money out because obviously, you know, the more money gets out, the more money you can point to the next property, and it is a more crucial, especially at that price point. Whereas if you have five hundred grand and if you get an extra couple of grand out here and there, it's not going to make much of a difference. And 
feel like maybe I don't know, I don't know even if you had a mortgage, you might not. You might have just bought it outright because I think the property worth before the refurb was actually about eighty to ninety, and obviously they've done work on it. So if I if you if I was to do this work, like get this work done, easily cost ten to twenty, like ten to twenty k. So that brings up to a hundred, maybe even one ten. So yeah, they'll, they'll be making probably a good twenty k or so give or take and then there was some expenses so it's not too bad and he started in he got in september started in october and he just got it done so he's just wrapping up a couple of things as well so yeah wanted to mention that because he had born in september that's what one two three four four months have passed when i spoke to my mortgage broker he says we'll see uh, then he said he had been having issues from the banks when he started in speaking to them that it's less than six months and they generally don't like that because it comes from you know, the OA crisis where people would literally get a mortgage back to back just get mortgages and they, they would just over leverage and they'd be too geared up and so they stopped us they have basically just a bit of time period at least six months and they he said unless he's an inheritance which he wasn't he says it's going to be difficult luckily he found a bank and it was it just happened to be the second best one anyway in terms of rate and the overall and it's the best it's the best one I can get because of the situation but he did limit it but he did say this particular bank the issue is they are slow <laughs> he says they are slow so just bear with that so, and they're slow so, and they're going to be slower anyway because it's a you know a limited company mortgage he says be prepared for them to ask all sorts of questions into the business you know even to ask like business plan or you know you know, forecast into the future or, you know, what you plan on doing because it's not like a, say, not like a regular job where, let's say, if I'm a programmer, that don't work out, i get another job. It's not quite the same. So, yeah, they said be prepared for that. So, in the process of that, and the, as before I run the numbers, the, the solicitors, uh, obviously, I just went with one recommended by Strike, the previous one that I used for this house, which was, well, what was it called? Higgs and Sons in the West Midlands. One of the best was not the best at all so stayed away from them so yeah i went for one recommended by strike the price seemed decent and oh price i think it was about 15 about 16 on the 15 16 on the pound or so and that was roughly the same sort of price that i had last year and i think things have gone up even more since then anyway so yeah it's not a bad price i feel like they might speed up a bit more they wanted the money for the searches and to sign some documents i was like don't do that because you do that, I can't get the money back. And then I can give the money back for the searches. So if I don't go through, the vendor don't go through, the mortgage doesn't go through, or something else happens, I can't get those search money back. And so I, so, so my general thing is, wait till you get the mortgage offer, not the soft offer, which is basically when they do a few background checks and they just basically, they don't verify income at that state. They just say, okay, these are the numbers you've given us. Based on that, assuming they all add up, and based on your credit score, we'll give you sort of a provisional offer, but we still got to do checks. Not that stage, it's the stage after where you've done all the bank stuff and they're like, yes, we're happy. And you pretty much don't deal with the bank that much anymore after that. And you just deal with the solicitors and you know, wrap things up that way. So once at that stage, I'm going to pay for searches because obviously you need, need the solicitors to do their work. Yes, I mean, you could say that might delay things a little bit, but... The reality is, I mean, probably delayed by like a couple of weeks, give or take, I, I'd say, probably not too much longer than that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be having to wait for the mortgage. I think it's going to be a good couple of months, the guy was saying, the mortgage broker was saying. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully the vendor doesn't, you know, bow out and think, you know, this guy is messing me about because he doesn't want to do the searches yet. I just, it's just something I don't feel comfortable with doing because I think it doesn't make sense in case something goes wrong. Cannot get that money back. Okay, so there's that, and that's the stuff with the estate agent. The other funny weird thing is if you look here. Oh, where is it? Oh, here. Yes, the build yeah, it's saying 2021. It is not the property of 2021. When you saw the images, you probably saw that it, it was pretty old, 1930s. So this, this because it's been renovated heavily since in there so it's a difficult to get the year so that was another issue that i had just on street parking before that's our price point that's what you i mean guess what what you would expect um anything else before we get into the numbers 
I'll mention the mortgage broker, mention the solicitors, and okay, yes, there's a couple more things with the mortgage, not the mortgage broker, the mortgage, which I'll mention in a second because it's part of the numbers. So let me just show you this list that I've got of basically fundamentals that I have to have. Uh, when I'm looking for property, it has to have great internet. Virgin 512 or more, I think he had the gig of it, and BT900. Uh, so those are the two, or in BT900, I mean, those are the two required, those are the internet required. For the simple reason, I'm not living there. But if I was to turn into a HMO later on, which I might do, if I did that, then I definitely need, you know, solid internet. Two, the areas that have Virgin 512. Were the one that got Virgin Gigabit first, or the one that have Virgin already? Were the ones that obviously got the Virgin upgrade first, then compared to the ones that didn't have it or already had BT whatever, got BT nine hundred first or BT Gig or whatever you want to call it. So they're more likely to get the upgrades and the infrastructure quicker as well. So there's that, and it has to be freehold EPC minimum of ETH. That's also the legal requirement, preferably a DN above, and transport links. So it has to be good road networks, train links, and buses no more than 15 minutes away via public transport to the city or town center and you know good schools uh, also by the way it's in chesterfield that i'm looking at that's where i live and i'm looking at sheffield not in Mary, but this i found in locals bah. probably 15 minutes maybe a tire under away so yeah schools uh the good standing you can just go on this website and you put your postcode in i filter from good and outstanding and that's what i want i want a bunch there within like two three miles and we need a hospital nearby. It just means there's good job opportunities. So plenty of people to you know employ, plenty of people to want properties, shops, supermarkets, special stations, takeaways, takeaways, just use you can use just eat. For like this and the transport link, I'll literally go on Google, put the postcode in, zoom in on the postcode, because if you're a bit too zoomed out, it'll, and where you live is still in the frame, you'll check relative to that as well. So just zoom in and then Type what you want. Literally type in petrol station, you'll get the nearest petrol station. So a little pretty unknown thing that you can do. Type in supermarket, you'll get the latest, the nearest supermarket. Or you can just type in Aldi, Lidl, Tesco, Asda, whatever, and it'll get it you. And or just zoom in and out and just look around, see if there's any you know shops like Nisa Local or you know small Tesco Express or something like that, and takeaways around as well. Again, you know, just it can help with that heavily. And how easy is the road to access? He has to be easy or medium. Medi so basically, medium is pretty easy, not too difficult. Hard is if it's rocky and you know you don't want to be driving over it. It's really bushy or it's just half a park, really half a parking. That's a hard, and I mean, I'll stay away from that. Again, I'm not living in it, but I'm still trying to put it in, you know, tenants' hand, you know, mindset. And I'm thinking, market's hot now. But when the market's a bit calmer, if there's two properties available and one with a you know decent sort of access, one with really hard access, person going to go with the one that's with, with decent access. It's plain and simple. So if I have these fundamentals from the start, it's gonna be a lot better. Easy, probably more of a private road. Probably not gonna get that at this sort of price point. But again, you never know. Investments, so any HS2, leisure clubs, that sort of stuff. Had to look, has some development potential for HS2 as well. What would the area be like? That's kind of linked with that as well and employment so this is a really cool tool so let me show you this so let me so like if you go on a post so let's go go cambridge and then let's see if we want to go cb10 this i'm just going anywhere really cb102 see there's 330 companies registered there cb102 aa there's one company registered and you actually tell you the company name and the address as well so this is, so this is really cool and their assets and whatnot so the website i came across this is what i used and their rental yield so rental yield one fifteen percent or above, and yeah, so this fifteen percent is you know before any you know like fees essentially. Okay, so what we have so these were the uh, the rent. Okay, so the rent for the properties on that road and nearby, the I've rang three different estate agents. So three different estate agents to get their opinion. They said five hundred to five seven five. But because of how good it's been renovated up to, they said 650, confident 625, minimum 675, stretch for 650. They were all confident with it. So I'm like, yeah, that's fine then. Purchase price 127,500, mortgage fees. There's no fees, and I'll explain that in a second. That's over here. Mortgage payment, again, that was just a pre calculation, but I'll show, show you the actual figures in a second. Deposit of you know 20%. 
I was able to get a 20% deposit, not the usual 75% LTV with a 25% deposit. I got a 80% LTV with a 20% deposit, which was good. Happy with that. Fees and expenses, a bit more expensive a month, but it means I'll have six plus K left to play with to literally roll into the next property, which I think short term that'll serve me better and long term when I can, you know, switch over to more capital growth and not be worried about cash flow that much. Okay, fees and expenses. So this is a monthly fees like insurance on the property, state agent, so like 10% for state agent. Uh, refurb, no refurb required, which is good. Stamp duty, you can use this calculator. Pre filed and insurance, 75 pounds. And again, these were on prelim preliminary figures. Things are slightly different, a bit more favorable to be fair. Okay, so the interest rate was 3.95%. 80% LTV, 20% deposit. And that meant it was £336 a month for interest only, so doing interest only. And that was 12.8%, and that's net. I'm pretty sure that's net. Yeah, that is net percentage. That is net, uh, you know, rental yield. So, which is really cool. I didn't actually put the gross rental yield here. So the gross rental yield is roughly about that. So it's fantastic. Um, I'll put gross rental yield 15%. Actually, no, not all. Put net rental yield 10%. That's what I'm gonna be looking for. Okay. And that, that means I can make a profit of 219 pounds and 41 pence and a month and per year £2,632.92 before corporation tax and after corporation tax is £2,132.67. I'm not taking any of the money out of the company that I'll be doing this in. I'm going to roll into the next property. Okay, so there's a booking fee of £299. This is non-negotiable. This cannot be, this is not like an arrangement fee that you can add on to the mortgage or anything like that. So with this, they require you to pay this from the start. So, and so that means if they reject you and say you can't get the mortgage or you decide to bow out, what happens? You don't get this feedback. It is annoying, so I'm gonna have to pay that soon. I would have paid it on like Friday, issue I had with, the new company I registered, I have not received the debit card yet for it. So I chased that up, they're gonna send me out another one and I'm gonna get that. And then, because I've transferred the 299 pound in, so I wanna use the company card, so it's a, obviously it's an expense from the get-go, which is fantastic and to, you know to offset against it basically almost like one month's rent is tax-free almost almost and there's a free basic valuation which is nice but this is pretty nice on completion you get cash back of 350 so you basically get that back which is pretty darn nice so that's those are the numbers and hopefully you enjoy that and i'll be doing more videos like i said i don't want to be doing this on the weekly i want to do this when there's a decent amount of update so when there's another update hopefully once i get the the booking fee done and i see i hear back from the solicitors the state and see what they're saying the next week or two and obviously i'll create you know vlog entry for and we'll see how it goes and um, but yeah i'll be creating videos throughout this entire process and just keep you updated so if there's any feedback you want to give or if there's any recommendation or there's any tips maybe you've done something and you're like okay try this or say this or do this. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog.